So today we're starting Unit 6 Applications of Derivatives. And our first topic is going to be called Rates of Change, and that's on pages 263 to 265 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to demonstrate understanding of the application of derivatives to solve problems including optimization, rates of change, and related rates. And our lesson objectives today, there's going to be two of them. Number one, to be able to understand that in the context of a real-world problem, the derivative of a function can be considered as a rate of change. And number two, to be able to answer word problems that include rates of change. So a couple of things from previous math courses that we need to remember. Number one, if we're talking about the average rate of change, that's really just the slope of a line between two points anywhere on a graph. Number two, if we're talking about the instantaneous rate of change, then we're talking about the slope of a tangent line to that curve. And I'll do a little example to show you the difference. So say what we've got here is a distance time graph. And those of you that have taken physics or any sort of sciences in the, in the past may understand where I'm going with this. But if we have a distance time graph and we're asked to find the average rate of change, all we're actually asked to find, say we're looking for the average rate of change between these two points, really what we're trying to find is the slope of that line between those two points. So we can just make a nice little right triangle and we have the change in Y we could figure out over the change in X. And that's what we call the average rate of change. However, if we're looking for the instantaneous rate of change, we're really looking for how this graph is changing at this one point in time. And as we know from all our work in the last couple of weeks, that what we're really trying to find is the slope of this line. And that is exactly what the derivative is. So here's how derivatives can start working our way into defining average rates of change and instantaneous rates of change. So here's our example. And it says, after traveling X kilometers, the temperature under the hood of a car is given by the following function. T of X equals 60X divided by the square root of X squared plus 10 plus 20. So our first question is to find the average rate of change in the temperature per kilometer between starting the car and traveling 10 kilometers. So if you plug this function into Desmos like I did, I tried to give you a little look at what that looks like. There's our starting points at 20. And at 10 kilometers, we're somewhere up here. So we are looking for the average rate of change here. So if we're looking for the average rate of change, what we just talked about, that's the same as the slope, and that's the same as your change in y over change in x. Well, we need to find the change in y, and the only way to do that, or the easiest way to do that, is just to plug in numbers into our function. So if we find out what t of 0 is, that'll give us the y value when x equals 0. So if I plug a 0 into this function, I get 20. If I get a zero on the top here, it doesn't matter what I divide by down here, I just get an answer of 20. The next thing I want to do is find t of 10, because I want to figure out that end point. What's the height of this point right here? If I plug a 10 into this function, it's a little different. I get 60 times 10. It's not as easy as the last one. We just have to do a little bit of algebra, some basic substitution. I get 10 squared plus 10 on the bottom plus 20. If I plug all that into my calculator, my final answer is 77 degrees Celsius. So at zero, well, before the car has moved, the temperature under the hood is 20 degrees. After 10 kilometers, the temperature is now 77 degrees. Using my slope, I can now find the change in Y over the change in X. Well, the change in Y, it went from 20 to 77. So that's a change of 57 degrees. And the change in x, it went from 0 kilometers to 10 kilometers, so that is 10 kilometers. So my average rate of change is that for every kilometer this car drives, the temperature is going up by 5.7 degrees Celsius. Part B of our example says, what is the instantaneous rate of change in the temperature per kilometer after traveling 6 kilometers? So now we're looking for the instantaneous rate of change. So what is at exactly six kilometers, how quickly is that temperature changing? Well, in order to do that, we need to be able to take the derivative of this function. So whenever I take the derivative of what seems to be a complicated function like this, I like to write it all on top because I'm a big fan of using the chain rule as opposed to the quotient rule. So if I do that, because this is a square root, that means that it's an exponent of a half. And because it's on the bottom, it means that it's a negative half. 
So the first thing I do is I try to rewrite this function so there's no denominator. Now I can take the derivative. But in order to take the derivative, I need to remember that I am using the product rule. So the product rule says I take the derivative of the first thing, which will just be 60. I multiply it by the second thing, which is x squared plus 10 to the negative half. And then I add to that the first thing, with this, which is 60x, multiplied by the derivative of the second thing. But the derivative of the second thing, I'm going to have to use the chain rule. So I bring the exponent down. I keep what's inside the brackets the same. I subtract 1 from the exponent. And then I multiply by what's inside the derivative, sorry, of what's inside the brackets, which is 2x. And finally, taking the derivative of a constant doesn't really do anything. It just gives you a 0. So what I've got here now is this big, long line. If you remember from a couple units ago, what we like to do is take out a greatest common factor. So I notice that there's a 60 and 60 here. So I'm going to take out that 60. I also notice that there are some x squared plus 10s in here. So I'm going to take out an x squared plus 10. And the exponent that I leave on that x squared plus 10 is I always take out the smallest exponent, which would be negative 3 over 2. Now I see what's left. So I took out a 60 out of my first term here. And I took out an x squared plus 10 to the negative 3 halves, so that means I have an x squared plus 10 to the power of 1 left over. I'm not going to put that to the power of 1 because that's a little redundant. Now I took out the 60, so it's gone. And I have two x's left over, the x over here and the x over here. So what I do have is an x squared. I also have a 2 and a half, so 2 times a half cancels each other out, but I have a negative here, so this is a negative x squared. And if you recall, I did take out an x squared plus 10 to the negative 3 over 2, so that whole thing is gone, so this is all I have left. So something that was really complicated a second ago isn't actually as complicated as we thought once we take the derivative of it. So we have 60 times x squared plus 10 to the power of negative 3 over 2, and x squared minus x squared is 0, and we're just left with 10. So our final answer for our derivative is that we have 600 x squared plus 10 to the power of negative 3 over 2. So that's the derivative. We want to know what the instantaneous rate of change is at a specific time. Sorry, at a specific distance, which is 6 kilometers. So all I need to do is plug a 6 in for my x. So if I'm going to find the derivative of this function when x is equal to 6, all I need to do is take 600, multiply it by 6 squared plus 10, all to the power of negative 3 over 2. I can do that in my calculator. I just take 600 times 6 squared is just 36, plus 10 is 46. And for simplicity's sake, I like to just put that as a negative 1.5, because why make it any harder than it needs to be? And as a final answer, I get 1.9. Now we're talking about a rate of change, so we need some units here, and that's 1.9 degrees Celsius for every kilometer. So if you recall back to that, that graph, at exactly six kilometers, the temperature of that engine is changing at 1.9 degrees Celsius per kilometer. I'm a person that always likes to make sure that my answers at least make sense. And so what we found in our last example was that when the amount of kilometers was six, so when we travel six kilometers, the change in the temperature was 1.9 degrees Celsius per kilometer. Now we know that to be the instantaneous rate of change, and that should be the slope of the line at x equals six. So all I'm gonna do is see if this thing is reasonable. I'm gonna plot a line, y equals 1.9x. So this purple line here, I don't know its actual y-intercept. Now I could do a bunch of algebra to figure it out, but I'm just going to kind of try on error to see if it makes sense. So I'm going to add, say, 40 to that line. And now the y-intercept's moved up to 40, so the whole line has kind of shifted that way. So I'm going to move it a little bit more, add 50. Oh, I'm getting a little bit closer. Adding 60 gets it even closer. And so what I'm really doing is just kind of narrowing in on trying to make this the tangent line. 
So if I go 62, it's a little bit too far, so maybe 61.8, that looks pretty good. So you can see at this point right here, this is the tangent line to the red curve, and that's really what we had found out when we took the derivative and let x equal six. Now, in theory, that should be at where x equals six. So if I draw one more line here, you can see that all three of these lines all kind of line up. At least I know my answer is quite reasonable, if not exactly right. So in summary, we have two different things. We have the average rate of change and we have the instantaneous rate of change. And the average rate of change is just the slope between any two points on a graph, where an instantaneous rate of change would be the derivative of that function at a specific point. There are many different scenarios that are going to involve or change in rate, and you're going to find that out a lot in this unit. Um, it's not just for objects in motion, but probably the things that you are most familiar with in your schooling is objects in motion. So there are going to be a lot of examples on that as well. So your assignment is on pages 264 to 265. Good luck.